The HIPAA High Tech Express is HIPAA security and privacy simplified. We start with the questionnaire. What we've done is basically turn the requirements, which can sometimes be hard to understand, into very simple, straightforward questions, such as does your organization have a complete set of IT security and policies? If you do, you answer yes. If not, no. And to really help you go about that process, we provide help embedded within the process. So there's help in answering the question, what does yes mean? We give information on why do we ask this question? What's it all about? And then what is required if it's no? So you can really understand what do you have to do to be compliant and to remediate. And then because we want to make sure everything ties back to the requirements, so we're focused on only what we really need to do, we put right within here the HIPAA requirement that it pertains to. So on this one, we're going to do no. And basically what you do is go through the process. So you're basically completing the assessment of where you are tied to the HIPAA on this one, the HIPAA security rule. There's also a very similar questionnaire for the privacy rule. So we'll go down here. And what you would do is complete this whole series of questions all the way through that would basically identify where you are in the process. We're going to quickly jump to the next step in this process which is the gap analysis. What we're doing here is really trying to take a risk-based approach. So using the risk assessment, which is going on at the same time, um, it helps us determine the priority. So we would have done our inventory. We would have identified where the PHI is. We would have also done a threat analysis to understand what are our biggest risks. That goes into the priority. And this is the number that it defaults to here to start you off. But what we allow you to do is basically using the same process here, we identify the key fundamentals of risk, cost, and impact. And for this one here, EPHI is not encrypted. We say what the risk is, such that a loss or theft of computing equipment that contains unencrypted EPHI results in many of the highest pro profile and serious privacy breaches. So you know right off what's the risk. So we're going to say this is a high risk. The cost to you may not be that high, so we'll leave it a medium, and maybe the impact just to show this is medium. Once again, we show the requirement that's involved in this, and then you can submit the priority. So what you're really developing here is a risk-based plan uh, to remediate any of the gaps and issues you have with the ultimate goal of reducing the risk of a data breach. This then will generate a work plan which are what these are the tasks that we need to do to become compliant to be, be protected and auditable and we start with the no's on the top those are going to be your highest priority but we also include anything yes and that's really just saying that you need to identify the evidence that's required the next step in this process is really the work plan and taking that prioritized gaps that we did and turning it into a work plan that we can use so as you see here, we have all of the items that we identified that we did not have. They're prioritized. So on this first one, collect and document the EPHI inventory. In this demo here, you can see it's in work, which means it's been assigned. We also have ones that still need to be assigned. So the concept here is you can focus on your highest priorities first, assigning them, completing them, and then moving down on a risk-based process to completing and reducing your risk. So I'm going to open up one of these, and you can see we get to the level here of these are the actual activities that you need to complete to be compliant, such as establishing the policy adequacy and documenting it, establishing a standard operating procedure for PHI inventory, and documenting it, etc. We also, at each one, tie to the documents that are required, any of the details that would be the requirements, and then back to the priority, just so you know where you are. So I'm going to delve down on one of these. And we have a very straightforward workflow process where you can assign items to anyone. You can give start and end dates. And what this is really going to generate are notices, warnings on when activities are complete, when they're behind, et cetera. And the manager can use this. So we're going to look at one of the tasks here. And part of this process is to add a security document if it does is required you can add additional tasks that are also required if you may have some type of unique uh, aspect to your environment this will then all go and be tracked through a series of reports 
so you can see where you are, are you doing your highest priority items, etc. One of the other really nice things in this is at any point in time, we have this full library of templates. So contract, manual, plan, policies, procedures, and workbooks that you can use. And they have been developed to be very straightforward and simple. And I'm opening one right here, as you can see, the contingency planning policy. It starts with a purpose, a policy statement. And instead of being 5, 10, 15 pages, we've kept these very straightforward, just what's most important. What do you need to do? What are the standards? What are the actual activities you need to complete? And then the references. And this one is only three pages. So this can be the start uh, for yourself in completing your full set of policies. That then creates a library of your own that you're able to use over and over again. So everything that you have tailored for yourself, as you see here, you have a library. So you have your own policies and procedures, other documents, checklists, plans, etc., that you can use. With the end result of this being an all-in-one process to achieve compliance in a very straightforward and simplified process.